Hi, so several of you have asked about how do you get the work you're writing published? Well, I have some stuff on Canvas that kind of walks you through that. So I'll actually point to that and I'll talk through it a little bit. But so on Canvas, and let me just share my screen here so you can see it here. So on Canvas, there's this link on the left hand side to poetry resources, and that pulls up a bunch of resources. So I'd say the first couple are pretty important to look at. So if you Look at these, there's a link here to new pages, literary magazines, um, has a whole bunch of literary magazines of all different types. So this isn't just, uh, you know, one type or the other. So traditional, uh, formed, open form, experimental, they're all, they're all kind of in here. New pages does a good job of keeping things pretty current too. So you can kind of click through, you can, you know, see so you can do online print and all that kind of stuff and search for it and read a little bit about the magazine and stuff. That's always helpful. Back on this page, PNW does the same thing. This is Poets and Writers. And Duotrope is a great list. Um, they also keep it very current, but they, they charge money for a uh, to keep going with it. You can do the free trial period and see it. There's some more like this hybrid list. And a great place, if you're just getting started, honestly, is uh, just go on Facebook and look for call for submission groups. Because a lot of magazine editors will go there and put uh, calls, especially for brand new magazines and things like that, put calls for submissions so you actually know they're looking for something. There's a lot of times, and you know, I've, I've been an editor for 20 years at different magazines. A lot of times our inboxes are just overflowing with submissions. So the, the idea that we like go out and look for more of them is, you know, it's difficult because we probably have 500 to read already. So if somebody's looking for them, that, that's good for you as a writer because you have a better chance of getting in. So I put a brief note with submission advice, and this is based on me being a creative writer. You know, you probably saw my bio. I published a whole bunch of stuff, but I also was a ed magazine editor for a long time. So this is like a, you know, my dual take on it. So publication advice, number one, don't submit based on some arbitrary list. So don't just look at the list and randomly sit, go check out the magazines. And this is for a very practical reason. Different magazines publish different things. So, for example, if you go look at some of the, the magazines in Arizona, New Mexico, they want to publish nature poetry about Arizona and New Mexico. If you send them something about Indiana or Boston or wherever the heck you are, they don't tend to take it. It's just not what they're looking for. Same thing as like, you know, cowboy poetry out West. If you send them to something, it's not cowboy poetry. Well, then they're not going to take it. Same thing is true of an experimental magazine. If you send them something very traditional, if you send a traditional sonnet to an experimental magazine, it's probably just going to get rejected outright. So it's always helpful to look and see what they do. I always think when you write something, look and see what you've written, take a good look at the form, and then go out and try to see if there are magazines that do something that's similar. And you'll find, um, those will take you more frequently. Read the guidelines. This is the second thing. Um, sometimes people are taking submissions. Sometimes they're not. I mean, if they're overloaded, they're going to sometimes just put on there, hey, we're not taking stuff. Also, sometimes the guidelines are pretty specific, so you want to follow them. Um, it's pretty easy. Sometimes it's like put a bio. Don't put a bio. Sometimes it's put a picture. Sometimes it's, I don't know, it's, it's rare to double space these days, but sometimes you'll find that. Um, you want to follow that pretty exactly. Uh, that's pretty helpful. Number three, don't worry if you get rejected. That's part of it. Um, until you, I think you really have a following, you know, you're going to get rejected. Just think about all your like favorite writers. I don't know who they are, but a lot of really famous writers got a whole lot of rejections before they got in and got started writing. Uh, you know, quite honestly, as a magazine editor, I rejected some really famous writers only because what they sent was not what I was looking for. I knew that was not their great piece. Every writer writes, you know, good and bad stuff. And, you know, you're looking for other, other stuff. So don't worry about rejection. Just keep going. Sometimes you send it just to the wrong editor. Sometimes the editor is in a bad mood. Who knows why you get rejected? Don't give up. Just keep going with that. Number four, please don't ask editors for advice. You probably realize this. A lot of you are teachers. <laughs> So you probably realize how underpaid the arts are and the humanities are. Asking an overloaded editor for advice, it just doesn't really win you bonus points. I got to tell you, when I'm being an editor and I've got 500 submissions, I'm trying to get through them quickly. 
somebody who asks for advice, I'm just like, I don't have time for that. So just do it. There are all kinds of ways to get advice. You know, you're in a classroom. So I would say ask for as much as you want in a classroom. Um, a lot of times I hold back a little bit with how much I write on comments, how much, how many comments I put on the student's work. Cause you know, people can get overwhelmed with comments, but if you want more, um, you can ask me. But there are also all kinds of poetry groups and fiction groups out there. If you want to do that, I would say join a group. You can find some great uh, uh, writing advice that way, but also some great writers to connect to and kind of ask your questions that way. That's not a bad thing for it. Don't expect to get paid if you're doing poetry. Pretty rare um, to actually get uh, money out of magazines. It happens sometimes. I mean, if, you know, Penguin picks up your book, yeah, you probably get paid for it. But otherwise, I don't know how, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You know, I'm um, six. A lot of times, whether you like it or not, editors do sometimes publish on reputation. Not always great. And sometimes you can tell a magazine does that. But, you know, build one. Start publishing a bunch of stuff. Send out things and get your name out into the community. Stop, you know, start trying to to get a name out there and don't expect to be published in the New Yorker on the first try. Uh, publish all kind of other places so you can build up a little bit of name. And so when you can submit, you can say, hey, I've submitted in all these other places and I've been published in all these other places. Um, number seven, I think is super important if you really want to be a writer. I mean this quite literally, if you really want to be a writer, get involved in the writing community. Um, we kind of think of writers as these lone wolves, but most of the time, they're not. Not even those lone wolf novelists you think of as lone wolves. A lot of times, they're not. Um, they're part of literary communities that they built up over years. Poets especially are part of literary communities. Most major cities have them, but a lot of like, you know, small towns even have little groups and stuff that do poetry. Get involved. The more involved you are, the more you make things happen. And quite honestly, the arts need people to push things and focus them. So anyway, that's my, my submission and my advice. Don't give up. Send to the right places. Think about where you're sending to. Don't be afraid to send. I mean, that's probably the last thing. I think one of the big hurdles for a lot of writers, even people who are older, you know, 50, 60, who have just been writing all their lives and never sent out stuff is just that, like, I don't know if I'm good enough. Um, can I send this out? Just do it. See what happens. You'll be surprised um, how many of your pieces will probably get picked up. You know, send 10, 15, 20 pieces out. See what happens. You could end up with like one publication or you could end up with 20. Who knows? Um, I remember it's been a long time for me, but I remember when I first got started, just seeing how many got picked up. And I was like, wow, oh, I'm not in the little box, just reading, reading these great pieces and writing stuff I like. So, you know, Get, try to get over that hurdle and do it. Hopefully that is, you know, hopefully that's helpful advice. I mean, if you want more specific advice about where to send a piece, you can always send me an email. And I'm happy to do that. I actually do that quite a bit with a, with a face to face classes. Not as much in the online classes, mostly because people don't ask. So hopefully that was helpful.